The next morning, breakfast never tasted so good. When they come in with like, you know, a breakfast of, of sweet treats, uh, it's it's glorious. It's taste of victory. Um, Do they bring in like a smaller plate for the dog too? Uh, no. Ignore it. <laughs> no. Because if they don't, I split mean, some off for him. <laughs> yeah. A couple of like, like, did you actually like sleep in a little longer than you usually would have? Because, like Verk said, probably. Very cool of yeah. <laughs> and I'll probably wouldn't have. Uh, no. And in fact, I will offer to whoever I can make this offer to, maybe the guard post, um, that if anybody needs help dealing with the symptoms mm. of withdrawal, that I will be happy to help with that free of charge as long as I'm here. Yeah, so you're already, like, gone doing your yeah. community service <laughs> by the time, like, these two are eating a nice breakfast. Like, yeah, she's really missing out. This is great. Um, <laughs> actually, Halivar will, will come for us. And, and enter the room. <laughs> Uh, who, of course, is your your sponsor here? It says mm. you did it. You very well did it. The banshee is no longer plaguing the library, and she appears Funny. to be gone for good this time. I think so. Uh, she actually had some say in the manner, which I'm glad of. Very interesting. I <laughs> you will not go into the specifics of it. I'm sure that your friend will, uh, and kind of looks and Baru is like, passed out. <laughs> so, uh, like, I'm sure he will write a glorious journal about this. It will be in our libraries at some point. But for now, your payment. And I'll put four coin purses of 300 gold each on the on the table. And we'll give you a, a, a graceful bow and we'll say, please continue to stay here as long as you need you stay for too long there will have to be discussions but <laughs> enjoy your time oh. here in the city for a little longer before you leave and if you do need nice. anything i will be now in my fully functioning library thank you very much and uh good luck with the cleanup <laughs> he uh, <laughs> turns and leaves and you can pocket your gold uh, now, was that before like, we have to put? No, a bit but there, there was also oh, the, okay. the guild mm -hmm. cut. Yep, sorry, that's after the cut, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, nice. I'm gonna go yeah, just and like, open it gonna... up gold. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go and put one of the sacks on Brute sleeping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. Well, uh, I might run and try and find uh, Eleanor and give her hers. You got any plans? Tobias just like looks up like coffee in one hand, food in the other, like this is it. <laughs> like I like those plans, know. but I have ideas. And I'm gonna walk out the door. <laughs> I am gonna go try and find Eleanor to give her. Yeah, her exactly. Her That's cup. not as hard much enough as that when you figure out what me. I'm not gonna even Oh no, it's it's not like that. It, <laughs> he actually has money for once to spend. He's gonna actually spend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can find her and you can give her her cut. Easy peasy. Yeah. She's just using her healing hands to heal people who are incredibly uh not uh not in the best place. I can also use Lester Restoration too. I don't know if that helps at all. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I think I think both are fine. Actually, no way, I don't do that because it's the second most spell and I don't have that. <laughs> Never mind. Cure wounds it is. <laughs> <laughs> what else were you planning on doing, Varric? You do have your uh, book to get from your places. Yes, I'm going to go pick up those. Cool. Anything else you were think of doing in the marketplace first? Because you still got like a little bit of time to kill. Yeah. Uh, can I look for anyone selling um, like magical stuff? That's a magical. longer check. That's a that's, that's a downtime check. check. To oh, okay, really yeah, look for, because yeah, you yeah. not only have you got you got to like figure, find like things you might be interested in, things that are real, like it's a whole thing. Okay. Um. Then it, it's in that case, I might just buy a health potion. Yeah. Easy, for now, easy. and then. Yeah. So you buy so a health potion much, while you're yeah. going through for your fifty gold for a health potion. Yeah. Uh, and then you go to your two little places, and I'm going to give you this information of, of of what both of them tell you together when you put them together when you figure it out. And they they both. Of them, you know, they went through the magic in those in in the two halves of the book that you copied down, and um, of course, what they tell you is that there's no magic in these things because you just drew them down out in like 
pencil. Yeah. You know? Uh, it's like, well, really, these are inert spells because you need to put more, pro like, but that's fine. Um, when you put it all together, the the notes and things, and of course it takes maybe, like, you sit in a park and you're, like, in a dark place <laughs> and yeah. uh, really read <laughs> through, like, uh, them and put it together. Um, Might actually go back to the library and do that. Exactly, you know, find a little dark place. Uh, the spells from what you're figuring out and what the books put out um, in that book uh, were necromancy. They were symbols of necromancy and of, of dark magic. And the second half was uh, that that can bind, that can bind something to this realm. So all in all, it is a powerful necromancy spell to bind something to this realm. In that case, I'm actually going to... Um... Once I once I figure all that out, I'm gonna put that all in back in my notes, and I'm actually gonna ask if I can take that book. Uh, go down and ask them if, if it's okay if I can take this. Yeah, that that would be totally fine. If okay. you because you gave it back, didn't you? Yeah, I did give it. Yeah, back. when you and go and get it back, it back, back exactly. Yeah. You, you get it back and you flick through it. Uh, the magic circles that are still they're still in there. They're kind of like burnt out. You know, like the magic yeah. being like used. I, I I definitely still want to take it. Mm -hmm. No, that's fine. I was just I'm no, really I, I know what it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And there's one of those things where you even probably in the library you like kind of compare and then you can like really see it. You don't really understand magic in an arcane nature, but you do have sort of like a, a bit of a natural understanding. You're starting to get things, and when you like you're like, of course this is necromancy. Of course, like all that. Stuff. <laughs> and like I said before, yeah. it's a very wizardly sort of magic. It is someone who took the time to learn this kind of thing and it's not like there's several failed attempts this is the right thing they did first try in this book okay and that, that that's probably going to be my day mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take up most of my day if not I'm going to go back and uh, drink <laughs> cool I am going to spend my day not doing a whole lot I've done pretty much anything I need to do here the one thing I would like to do is take a look at this Kopesh and just kind of examine it, see mm -hmm. what it's all about. You can give me That's an investigation check. Sure. That's something that I'm really good at. <laughs> it's made of some kind of bone. It's very well crafted. The tip is definitely silver. It's, uh, it's silver. And you know that silver has monster hunting properties because some monsters... You know, uh, silver can cut through them better than mm -hmm. regular steel, so it's valuable. Would I be able to roll a survival check on the bone to see what kind of thing you it came can from? Try. Something big. This whole kopesh <laughs> is made out of one piece. Oh, it's like one thing. Okay, that's. It doesn't look like All bone right. anymore because it's been so well crafted. But it is right. bone, but it's not like it looks like a bone, you know, like something from Monster Hunter. But it is all made of one oh. piece. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm going to is... ask for Virik's help in something. Oh, yep. Well, what's up? I was hoping maybe you could help me break in somewhere. That I can do. That owner <laughs> of that hunting animal shop. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to I would like to break in and give him a little bit of a scare. Oh, I think that we could do. <laughs> okay, so I assume we wait till nighttime to do this. Yeah, exactly. You've already spent like days doing things. So uh, uh how do you want to go about this? Well, we can't just free all the animals because then we'll starve in the streets, right? Yeah. So my plan is to break in while he's sleeping, scare him basically threaten that we'll be back in X amount of time and not so gently suggest that he should treat his animals better. Okay. I like where this is going. I'm going to, I'm actually going to hand you my, my uh, plant mask mm -hmm. <laughs> for, for intimidation. Uh, with anything. Ah, okay. She looks very <laughs> silly with it. <laughs> oh, she doesn't no, have a hood I, either. So it's like, even I silly. have ideas. I have ideas. I know. <laughs> and I specifically don't have makeup on. And I have the mask on. So, uh, go ahead and give me an investigation check for, you know, you've got to case the place, right? Oh, yeah. Mm. Got to learn how to break in. Do you know there's a shop down below? 
you know, there's a shop down below. There's another story above. These kind of places, often people live in the story above. Mm -hmm. There are windows where you could break in. You don't see any sort of... It's a particularly easy place to break in, but you could... You can open windows, Virik. You can break through them. Yep. You know, I'm actually also going to do this. Where? Why am I? I? I did it again. I looked at the wrong place for spells. Uh, you look I keep abilities. looking. I keep scrolling yeah, down in abilities. Yeah. You can put them there for you. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, I should do that. Yeah. So you pass without trace. You kind of, you know, it's night already, but this is on a slightly more public street, but in that sort of slightly downtrodden area. Um, uh, I want to climb up mm -hmm. and look in the window. Give me a... Uh, just for climbing right this, I, I don't want need you to do anything, but do give me a perception check. Okay. You don't have disadvantage because you are Oh my drown. god. <laughs> you climb up. You like, you climb up, open up, uh, look it's for... because we're doing something for you. And <laughs> as you're looking through the... <laughs> <laughs> as you're looking through the window you uh you see the the owner of this shop kind of like tapping the end of a vial looking into it like just throws it across the room and it smashes and it smashes uh. right by your window and he turns and you lock eyes for like an uncomfortable amount of time and then he just like charges at it and actually opens the window on you which sends you tumbling to the to the ground <laughs> Okay. And he uh, yells out onto the street. He's like, "You two, leave me the hell alone, you monsters!" You know what? I have an idea. Uh, I am going to do immediately do step of the wind and <laughs> just shoot up right behind him and say, "Try that again." You're gonna need to give me an acrobatics check for that. Oh, your jump distance is doubled. Yep. Run up. It's enough. Uh, I'm not doing the math again. I, I, it's spe there are specifics, but it's it's enough. We've doubled. You can totally take run up, jump behind this guy, and uh, what did you say? You want to try that again? He turns, and this is where you get the like the fear. He's like, what? The? And because especially because as you ran, like you ran like coated in shadows and just sort of like. And you know what? While I'm right. running, I take off the mask. Yeah. So I just appear behind him, and he's like, what? The? I know. I, I. Uh, I'm sorry. I, uh, and like backs up against the window when you can sort of like, you could tell like he's any like tip from like teetering off and yeah. falling. Oh, you don't want to go down the air either. You know, she's much worse. Kind of like turns back and she's got a big sword. She's <laughs> like, what do you want? You want money? I've got money. I can give you all the money. You're going to change how you do things. What, what, Your what? animals, you're going to treat them right. You're going to treat them well. You can probably make more money that way. And also, if you don't, we'll be back. Yeah. And we won't say hi this time. No, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, I'll treat, I'll treat them right. Yeah, you know, they're, they're animal, I love animals. I'll, I'm tr I'll treat them so well. You, you I'm won't gonna even. That. Yeah, I'm going to inside that too. <laughs> He says he loves animals. No, he's lying. Through. He just wants you to leave. He will say anything he wants to get you to leave. Anything he can. I am actually, in that case, I am going to uh, grab him and throw him to the floor. Uh, to the do floor I make an unarmed? No, no, no. Throw him to the floor behind me. Yeah, unarmed. Check, um, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. You can yep. like, grab him and throw him around you and like send him crashing into like the, the furniture and stuff like that. And at, at some stage when I throw him into something that like he re like say a table that breaks and he, he breaks in, I'm going to go down and unlock the door and come back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. So Eleanor can join so, you up there. Yep, Eleanor can join. <laughs> when, and I'm actually going to as she walks in, I'm going to actually uh, do uh, my minor illusion on the mask and have it look like it's sort of growing around her head. Yeah, so like the plant like life is growing around her head. plant monster. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Should we feed him to his animals? I think they'll be happy oh, for I like it. That idea. No, I no. no I'm starving after all. I'll, I don't know. Like, I've, been a, I've been a good man. I've been a pious man. I don't, I don't deserve this. Country. I can speak to your animals. 
That's that's poppycock. That's madness. You know what? We can let them be the judge. If you know, we come back in a month's time and we open the all, all the animals with him in the middle of the room. I wonder what they'll do. You can give me intimidation with advantage. Either one of you, whichever's better. Uh, I have plus two. I think I have the same. If you want to roll. Okay. Because <laughs> we can't trust my roll. <laughs> that's true. Uh, <laughs> at least the one got got, got put away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, come back in a month. You, uh, you, you'll prove. I'm the, I'll be the best animal keeper in the whole city. Gosh, I don't know if I believe you. Hmm, yeah. You know, it sounds like he might try and move. It's probably not the best idea. We can follow people very far. Well, let's bring him down to the animals and see what they say. I like that idea. I'm going to start dragging him down. Drag him. And he's like, no, 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 not the animals. No, not my, not my friendly, glorious animals that are my friends. No, like kicking and like, I just can't overpower you. He's just like a regular commoner. At this point, like all the animals are awake and like the tiger is like growling and, mm -hmm. and all that. Ooh. Birds are squawking. <laughs> so so yeah, I'll, we'll just like place him down like in the middle of the room. Yep. And I'll go to walk over the tiger's cage. And I'll just say, this is your last chance to convince me. I, I, I promise, I'm a changed man. I, I treat them wrong. I, I can admit that, but I'm, I'm a changed man. I'll, I'll be the, the, the best animal keeper in the city. You can, you can believe me. Can we insight that one? Yeah, absolutely, you <laughs> can insight that. Do we need to? <laughs> Uh, I he's, think we need he to. He is absolutely still lying. And and Varric was right, actually. He's probably just going to run away, like, tomorrow. <laughs> All right. I unleash all the animals. Okay. I'm not gonna uh, look you, can you talk to them first? Like, please talk <laughs> to them and tell them I'm going to cast speak with animals. <laughs> they are confused because of the whole like power dynamic in the room like especially the big animals like the yeah. big dogs and the tiger are just like oh we do we finally get to kill him <laughs> oh <laughs> we finally get our chance and like it's a hungry growl from the tiger especially when you like if you if you said you were opening all the cages like it mm. will like prowl out and even like like a lick him like a lick his cheek and he's like oh no please <laughs> They really okay. want to kill you. No, I, I don't see why I've been. We've always been the best of friends, and like the tiger you growls can't lie very to them. <laughs> you know, it, 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 lying to us is one thing. I mean, that's the obvious. It's the easy way. But you know, they're the ones that want to kill you. Uh, we're just sort of standing here, and we're probably gonna let them. And give me intimidate with advantage. Oh my god! <laughs> That's the second time I've done that! That is insane. That is the second time I've done that in this campaign. What the? <laughs> he kind of likes, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, like, takes off trying to run. He doesn't get far. Oh, no. His coattails are, like, bitten by the tiger, starts dragging it back. It becomes a, sort of a horrifying bloodbath as all the animals just take the chance they've wanted the whole time. Oh, okay. And it's it's a scene and the crunching noise of the bones. He's still screaming, but there's bones crunching and tearing of flesh and it's... Mm -mm. Well, this is happening, I'm just going to uh, turn to Eleanor. Well... Okay, uh, well, uh, shall we tell the animals we can take them out of the city? Because I probably don't want them. You notice, like, animals. all the lights, like, on the street starting to light up, because this screaming is <laughs> blood-curdlingly loud. Well, shall okay. we go, animals? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> shall we go, animals? Like, when, when, when they're, like, satisfied... Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, these are our streets now. <laughs> oh dear. And like sort of like bustle out under the command of the tiger. 
<laughs> oh no, now we have to persuasion the tiger to come with us. <laughs> And then you hear sort of commotion on the streets because not everyone was asleep yet because it wasn't incredibly late. And you literally hear like in the yelling, like, there's a tiger! There's a tiger on the streets! And just like roaring and chasing and screaming. I just look at Ayla. Well, I can't convince them. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna try to convince the tiger to like come towards the edge of the city if I can. You can give me a per persuasion check. With treats? <laughs> <laughs> As we're going that way, uh, if we're going towards a gate, I'm actually going to go and like warn the guards of what's going to happen along with the rip. I'm like, look, okay, we have this is thing that's happening. This is tiger. Animals are coming this way. Tiger leading them. Probably want to get stay out of the way. Uh, considering you said with treats, definitely yeah. enough to like if a tiger was you got to speak with animals on. It was just fucking with people. It was just scaring like just like random people just for the fun. And then you manage to start leading it, and other animals sort of follow in wait a little bit. And you start leading, and like you go and warn the guard, and they're like, what are you talking about? A tiger! And then this blood-coated tiger, sign of prowl, where like, I was like, yeah, come on, come on. Tiger! And like, like, prowls past, and kind of like looks at them, and they're like, yeah, okay, there's a tiger. And uh, you manage to sort of lead it and the gang of hunting animals out of the uh, city gates. All right. Well, that could have gone better, but at least they're free. <laughs> Be free. <laughs> and they uh, head off into the forests. <laughs> to be a problem for some level one party in the future. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way they're going to bathe. <laughs> right. They really just started a gang. An animal <laughs> gang. Oh, uh, well, that's the thing that, that uh, that's the thing that happened. <laughs> That could have gone better. I'm just gonna take the mask back. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Good idea. Uh... Bad execution. <laughs> <laughs> then you can head back to the tavern. Oh. Yeah, I guess we head back. <laughs> and Tobias is like, just, what are you doing? Down, and just and just... they're like having a drink. He's like, oh, hey guys, how was your trip to the pet store? Did you like jokingly, like, did you like scare that guy like you know he's not gonna oh what no didn't work out they ate him uh, yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> very cool <laughs> well nature takes its course i guess anyways <laughs> we won't tell brood about this one either <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, uh... He's reading that book again. He's very absorbed. I, I, I really hope Will watches this book. <laughs> I hope he doesn't. But he will. Because yeah, actually... he's actually a nerd and he will do his homework. <laughs> Call you oh. out, Will. <laughs> well, well, that happened. <laughs> I feel like there's just, like, blood on your shoes, too. There's God. definitely, like, like a little holy. bit of a mist, yeah. <laughs> A little bit yeah, of a blood like, spot. Oh, that's, uh... <laughs> everything according to plan, I guess. Anyways, yeah. so did you guys want to leave, like, tomorrow or tonight? Probably, t we can wait till the morning, right? It wasn't that bad. <sighs> I mean... We solved the issue as far as the gods, see? <laughs> Alright, perfect. <laughs> so I have a question while you're still, like, hanging out at night. Very, do you ever, like... Explain the book now that you know what its contents were, magically. Uh, I I I was gonna I was planning on explaining it to uh, Brut and sort of giving him that. Fair, yeah, cool. I'm kind of terrified that that Aeonor's uh, gonna smite it. <laughs> she knows what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it isn't so, anymore. No. Remember? Oh, I know, but like the the just the the, the concept. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, He's, he's already, like, it's reminding him that, you know, she said he was cursed and needs to be fixed. It's just like, right, yep. <laughs> cool. So you spend a night, you you wash your, your boots from the blood. Um, again. As you have many times in this tavern room. Oh, yes. <laughs> and you have a nice Sweet. little evening supper and you get your sleep, those of you that need sleep. And then come prepare to leave in the morning. Uh, prepare to leave back to the north. 
Uh, anything anyone wants through? to do before they leave or any discussions you need to have before you leave? Uh, I, think no, I think the only discussions I, I, I want to have is with Brute, and so they could wait. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, getting together to, to leave the city is easy enough. You walk back through the city and you walk back through the nicer parts. If you want to buy any more, like a small little trinkets or anything, you <clears> totally <throat> can while you pass. But you can head out and start getting back on the road, walking back the way you came. It's a long walk, it's a long hike. Just like last time you pass other travelers on the way and it's you know it's not unpleasant most of the time um uh, considering you spent just a you know a week or so in a city you know going back through the wilds is, is definitely pleasant um you uh and, and honestly the whole sort of way back goes about any sort of problem as far as if uh, there's not really anything you want to do. You're just sort of rushing back as fast as you can. No, not as fast as you can, because you're not going to at a ridiculous, like, forced march or, or anything like that. You're taking your your regular travel back to Slate Cove. Of course, you don't have horses or anything, so it still takes quite a while. I believe it took essentially a month to get here last time. So when you get back to Slate Cove, it is, um, you know, it's kind of exactly how you left it. Now, Varric was like, eh, you know, it's... It's Slate Cove. It's it's yep. it is what it is. <laughs> Tobias and Aelon will be like, oh yeah, it's summer. It's nice. It's getting warm. Very. It's fucking freezing still. It's the it same. So it's cold. It's uh, the same. <laughs> so cold. <laughs> but so they start talking about that. I'm like, it's the same. Yeah. Eric will just say it's the same every time they say anything like that. <laughs> and it's quite interesting going back to Slate Cove's little uh, settlement compared to the vastness of Thundral before. You get around the Ring of Haldun, the rocky walls outside, and you see this nice little wooden stone village built around a tiny little winding stream, and uh, it's got little cute little wooden walls in some places. Ah, it's it's sweet. I can see the end of the town. I couldn't do that in Thunderall, you know, like that kind of thing. And uh, it's it's home, you know. It's all the simple things, like just the smell of the, the, the air and the smell of some people cooking meats as you're traveling back towards Kazimgard. It's nice. It's It's pleasant. It is, to all of you, uh, to some degree, home. When you get back to Chasm Guard, it's a little quiet uh, for a bit, but in the two months or so you've been gone, uh, your, um, your, your, your people, uh, uh, Eleanor, have been cleaning up the place. It's not <laughs> horrendously that much better, but like the overgrown weeds in the courtyard have been taken care of. You know, some of the interior walls have been repainted and no longer have, like, paint f stripping from them. It is more how a lived-in place should look. It's still got ways to go because they're not interior decorated or anything like that. But, you know, it's not as half-broken as the castle was before. It's not as deteriorated. Um, yeah, what do you do when you get back? Well, I guess first things first, find Pearl Giant or, <laughs> um, Kinley. Shoot, what's her name? Kinley, Kinley thank you. Yeah. And <laughs> deliver the cut of the gold from our most recent They're mission. They're actually uh, together in uh, Kinley's office. And when you, you, you go up, it looks like Pearl Giant was just about to leave. And it's like, ah, if it isn't my favorite heroes, you're back. From slaying the Banshee of Thundral, I hear. It's glorious. More or less. <laughs> so you did it. it. Was... You you defeated the Banshee. Oh, we did. Uh, and then we also had to, after defeating it, uh, lay it to rest because it came back. Um... Mm, as they are prone to do. And like Kinley's in the background, like nodding. It's like, a Banshee can be a very difficult quarry to kill. To put to rest. But it is done. Good, good, my friends, and like an uncomfortable like clasp on the shoulder. Like, <laughs> now I'm I'm very happy that you've completed that. That's it's very very good, very good work indeed. Now that's uh, slaying a spirit and going into even further. You, you'll have to tell us every single story about it in, in great detail over ale and feasting. You're back. We should we should feast. I like this idea. <laughs> this is good. Feast is good. It kind of like Indeed. yells down. It's like it's like a feast. 
prepare the food to like uh the uh <laughs> the open <laughs> fur three and we'll um they start hurrying around to prepare you know a little bit of food whereas the hell giant that. is basically asking for a play-by-play -play of uh, yeah. what happened i imagine that uh, Virik would be happy to tell him uh play-by-play -play what happened with yeah. proper detail. <laughs> and so you're Maybe saying that there was a tiger. Omitting some stuff. <laughs> no, no. Okay, yeah, good. No, he would. Um, <laughs> it, probably omitting the stuff it brutes around. <laughs> yes, which he would be, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, Hurl Giant is incredibly amused. Kinley actually sits and listens, uh, to, considering you're the one telling a lot of this story, because um, you, you were the most personally connected to it. She is actually, you know, interested and, and mostly doesn't talk, but just and very clearly listens to you, which is more than most of the other times you've spoken. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, after, uh, 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 you know, he doesn't actually even stay feasting for very long when, like, you know, they get some food going. He, like, eats a little bit and is like, well, I must be off. I've got work to attend to outside of the castle. But please, continue telling your stories. Continue... You've got to relish after a, a job well done like that. And I assure you, there are other jobs to be done. So you should rest now and, and lay lay your heads down. If you do lay your heads, I don't really remember. Like, kind of pointing at Virek. Like, so... <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I do. <laughs> good, good, you should. It's healthy. <laughs> and I will talk to you about this other job in the morning. Or perhaps later, if you end up drinking too much... Don't drink I put too the wine much. on the table. <laughs> Be merry. <laughs> Be well. And he will head out uh, into the evening night. I will actually, because uh, I have the, the good, uh, the, the dark elven wine, mm. I will actually pull that out. Uh, and I'm going to pour myself some and then offer some to Kinley. She's like, would you like to try? What is this? <laughs> uh, dark elven wine. I figured you might want to try it as Why did something you, Did you different. acquire this in Thunjo? On the way. Uh, two gnomes in a store that saw looked like it appeared out of nowhere. Ah, yes. Yes. <laughs> well, I suppose there's no harm in it. She I will pour her a glass She will as well. try it. She very clearly does not enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> very clearly does just she might want to try it <laughs> but yeah she's like and she'll like even like talk to you about it in like wine terms which you actually kind of understand being a wine drinker yeah <laughs> okay I think that, that that's most of what I do I drink myself until I'm ready to to pass out or meditate one or the other <laughs> feasting you gotta drink mm -hmm. uh you two do you just no, feast and have a time <laughs> Good. Yeah. I mean, while he's telling this them. story, definitely gonna like show off the old kopesh that we got. Oh yeah. yeah. And we got this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just put it on the table, like uncomfortably close to the other food that's out. Oh my god. It's fine. I didn't think that. Yeah. <laughs> most of the blood has been washed off. Yeah, exactly. Blood. It's mostly. I clean. imagine this happens a lot. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just quite happy to, to to chuck weapons on the on the dinner table. <laughs> Put in viscera and I'm too close to the food. Yeah. At but, least a um, headbag this time. No, yeah, it's a little hard for a headbag. <laughs> cool. So you you feast, you you eat, you drink, you be merry, you make your ancestors proud. Yeah. <laughs> and you wake up feeling pretty hangover because you spent like you know a, a month walking and eating and, and drinking water and being very sensible i can actually cure all of us yeah <laughs> like, hey. oh, was terrible. Oh. oh this is this is handy i this like this fine. part literally <laughs> is handy the spirits grant many gifts <laughs> <laughs> i love it um, Can I? I guess oh, one sorry. Thing I would, I was, no, I was just gonna say one thing I'd like to do in town is just go deliver presents. To Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, they would be. Uh, th if you start telling them the stories, yeah, I'm very happy about them, of course. Oh, I definitely am. Yeah, I'm probably gonna censor some bits oh, yeah. about <laughs> certain things, especially when mum's around, which is like, um, 
I definitely would take my younger brother Eli Elias aside at one point and be like, "This dagger like pierced the king of spears," and like, <laughs> and then you give it to him. Yeah, yeah. Like this was even... wet with the blood of the arch villain of the criminal underworld of Thundral. And, <laughs> that's like, amazing. Just really ham it up too. Yeah, that be like, that's no, so good. This is yours, so I like that a lot. If you, whether you're using it to carve wood or gut fish, just keep that in mind. <laughs> He ain't, he, ain't, he ain't got anything else to do with it. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. Um... And I will have more gold sent to the orphanage with another letter that I don't write personally. Yes, exactly. You get. So, <laughs> um, Promising that I'll visit soon. It's actually very. It's actually interesting when you um, start sending off the the letter. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Kindly is kind of nearby because you have like kind of because. <laughs> uh, Cast doesn't want to do does the writing if I remember correctly. It is needs to get like ink and pens and things and start writing it out and start you know uh, and and gets them from Kindley and was like, oh, you're sending a letter off to the orphanage. Well, you could perhaps send it in person this time. Uh, there is a job in Blender, which is where your orphanage is because it's quite next. It's near Oafenfair. It's just sort of away from all the danger. Um, mm -hmm. It is a town, actually right on, on the edge of Jotunskoga where you were before, so you're kind of going back the way you came if you went out that way. Um, we have a job out there, uh, if you would be interested in taking it. Hell Giant is expecting you to. No yes, that would be lovely. It's been a while since I visited. Uh, she goes and, and, and gathers the contract from his office. He's not back yet. Um, and will show it to you. It actually says that you are to escort, uh, to go to Lendir, to find a, a a cleric of the Eternal Guide named Cherubin, and escort her to Bastillion, keeping her safe from the dangers of the ice sheets around. Okay. Let me talk to the others. I will certainly need someone familiar with the area, or at least wilderness itself. A ranger, <laughs> someone say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Yeah, and you can talk with mm -hmm. them when they're like, oh, when everyone sort of gathers back for dinners. Yeah. Can I check the um, the smith at the elven temple? Your uh, chakrams are done. Yes. Uh, okay. Cool. <laughs> yes. I will compliment him on his work, and thank him, and then go back. <laughs> Your shiny new toy. Yes. Oh, you know what else I'm actually going to do? I'm going to visit the gnome again. I have unfortunately written his name down somewhere that's not easy to access uh, now. I, I, I didn't actually I, think I, of this I stuff just now. I passed him a second now. ago on my notes page trying to find <laughs> yeah. um, but Trying to find my notes from back then. <laughs> Gapnoff Gorenzi. Gapnoth uh, Garenzi. I'm going to go visit him, and I'm actually going to ask if he can make me uh, some gloves with sort of uh, a metal or hard sort of on the inside to sort of lower the risk of like hurting myself when I catch the chakrams. Uh, I think like it's one of those things where like I want to be okay anyway, but like just in case. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's not so much a mechanical thing, but it's like a, a, a law thing, yeah. and you would absolutely mm. be able to put that together to you and that won't even like take a day you'd be like that's that's yeah. incredibly easy to do that's fine. sweet and just uh, actually how like much does it in front of you for like five gold to get these sweet metal okay, line that. gloves and i'll head back to the others yeah you can discuss the contract yes i will bring it forward and i will just say i have family in lundir so oh, okay. I was planning on heading that way anyways. And this is convenient. Um, Makes sense to me. Aelnor and Tobias, you can give me history checks. Please, Aelnor, you have <laughs> advantage. <laughs> uh, Tobias, you've heard rumors about Lender. You've never been there. Uh, cause it's, it's That's too far for like a random journey, you know. Um, and near it is a, a place they call Red Town because that's where some displaced tieflings and apparently even hobgoblins live and apparently it's a, not a very pleasant place apparently there's like a lot of crime uh, so, uh, and that sort of stuff so considering you're, you're picking up 
someone named Cherubin, you actually sort of connect that that's probably a tiefling's name. Um, just out of guess. I mean, it, it could not be, but Northmen don't name themselves after angels. Um, yeah. So you assume that that's probably going to be involved, but you know, you just dealt with some crime. It'll be easy. <laughs> I will uh, <laughs> raise this point to the group and um, let's explain like, oh, well, you you know Corpse Flower, yes? Our red-skinned, behorned, and behooved friend. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I very much imagine the person that we're meeting is someone like him. It's, well, that's not surprising, considering we're escorting them to Bastillion. Yeah, um, yes. this place, Red Town, are you, are you familiar with it? Well, not so much. And just like looking to Viric, like, you'll love it there, I'm sure. Lots oh, I think I will. Hobgoblins like those ones we saw. I make a face when you say There's hobgoblins. Th <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, probably the face that you expect you hear but, like, when you say tiefling is what she makes for hobgoblins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and there's tieflings. And I just say disgusting vermin. <laughs> well, however you feel about them, I'm not going to be the one on the leash this time. That's that's their. <laughs> uh, that's kind of where they congregate. Place festered with crime, a proverbial den of scum and villainy, if you will. Perfect. <laughs> just like Eric, you'll fit right in, I'm sure. I can get us through the wildlands, but once we get there, we may need you to show us the ropes of the uh, way you uh, look fresh. I can definitely do my best. <laughs> That's all we can ask. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. I think. But uh, I mean, I those mean... are just stories. Who knows? Maybe it's actually quite a quaint little town. I've never been myself. I just know the reason I haven't been there is because I've heard that, you know. Anyways, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, well, I mean, crazy. either or. Uh, I'm really interested to see more of uh, uh, Coastlands people. Like, the horns and all is cool. <laughs> Can they all do that magic stuff with the blood? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've all put it to you this way. I've only ever seen one person do that, and I've only ever seen one T playing. So, oh, yep, fair enough. <laughs> it's a 100% oh. ratio, you know? Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds like a plan to me. Excellent. And actually, you know what? We should talk to Corpse Flower. We're going to be headed out through that part of town anyways. Maybe he could fill us in a little bit, because he said he was from Bastillion, right? Not yeah. a bad idea. That's a good idea. Sweet. So why don't you go and uh, pay him a visit maybe the next morning or so, you know. Mm -hmm. Give yourself some time to, like, restock up on, on your supplies and things. Mm -hmm. and then uh, Go and see him at your 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 local, your tavern. Um, he's there. He's actually outside chopping firewood for them. Because <laughs> he's strong. Like, you actually see, like, the, the, the guy, clearly, who works at the tavern is there and, like, has, like, a bit of, like, a bandage around his hand. The corpse fire is doing the... <laughs> The firewood <laughs> chopping and said, well, this guy can't do it and like just chat and shit. very him. nice of him. Yeah. Of course, I is a lovely dude. I will I actually can. offer to like hold my hand up for the axe. We had some questions we were hoping to ask you. I can help in the meantime. He will absolutely hand it to yeah. you and will just sort of like cross his arms and say, like, I am um, always welcome to answer any questions, although I know very little on, on your monster hunting ways. Oh, and I will thing. just start chopping the wood. <laughs> <laughs> We're not hunting a monster this time so much as seeking to protect someone from potential monsters, as it were. We That's probably to... harder. I imagine that when you have a quest to escort someone, they can be quite difficult. Maybe don't uh, behave. Maybe creatures will... Yeah, nobody them. really likes the escort quest. It sounds quite unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, is... We haven't met this person, but we are meeting them in Lender. We're going through Red Town. Are you familiar with the place? It is quite unpleasant. 
Yes, I am familiar with the place. I've heard. Uh, I I was there when I was much younger. I was did not stay for very long. I hear it is much worse now that all of the. Uh, um, trying to find a word for it in your language. Uh, the kerfuffle in Ophifer took place. The kerfuffle, you say? I look to... <laughs> I, I, like, Virk would just look at the other two, like, they're, clearly they'll know. <laughs> <laughs> I just look to Aelin, like, clearly she'll know. <laughs> I assume he's talking about the war. Yeah, and yeah, the war like, and, like, and the I, 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 I get and sullen and I, like, chop the wood a lot more forcefully. Like... <laughs> like you nearly cracked like the wood the wood is being chopped on <laughs> okay bad kerfuffle then i rarely are they good my friend this no I, I, from what i have heard and i am a man of the world and i like to hear about other places in the world especially more east in case i ever want to go back out there uh, refugees many of them went to lendia no matter which side they are on. So, the war continues in its streets, from what I hear. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. But I'm sure it'll be a perfectly safe place for some uh, talented individuals such as yourselves. I'm also going to ask him, sorry, what's the name of the person we're escorting again? Cherubin. Cherubin. Um, look. I, it's a, I highly doubt you've heard of this specific person, but we're... <laughs> escorting I'm not just going to say, like, all tieflings know each other or whatever, but... Um, we don't even know if she's a tiefling, actually. We're just assuming based on the name, but Sherman Oh my is, god, this is great. Um, what do you know yeah, about like, this her, is what, despite this her This is why device doesn't interact with people. <laughs> oh, it was exactly as awkward as that sounded. Yes, that yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what is it you know about her other than her name? Or do you just know her name? She is a priestess, I believe, is she not? Yes. There was of something, I can't remember though. <laughs> the Eternal Guide. Uh, thank you, the Eternal Guide. <laughs> and he kind of nods and says, well, that would make sense. Uh, it is the most people in Bastillion worship the Eternal Guide. It, he teaches all sorts of uh, pleasant stories of, of how you can change and become whatever you want to be in life. A lot of uh, folk appreciate that. It's huh. understandable. We are escorting her to Bastillion, actually, which is why we came to talk to you. Just if thought you might have any advice for... Oh, you're traveling there. Okay, I, I will give you very good advice. You will need to be incredibly careful on the ice sheets around Bastillion. There are rumors of creatures under the ice. Uh, and I say rumors because it is easier to say that, whereas I believe that, that perhaps the more accurate uh, word in your tongue might be facts. There are horrifying, horrifying creatures under the ice that can eat a man whole, if they so wish. But you are quiet in the snow, so... You may be fine. Um, there are also roving bands of Goliath who decide to prey on those who get past the monsters in the ice. And then, of course, there are probably a lot of people who want to make a fool of you in Bestillion because they know Grey Fists are mighty, but they're mightier and all that sort of thing. You want to keep an eye on your pockets and your souls. And he kind of grins like, so the, was that a joke? <laughs> was that not a joke? The best Hard one is tell. like, like Virik would have been like, uh, uh, of the, like, of oh, the pockets, he would like, uh, souls? Uh, just and like, then he just like bursts out laughing. <laughs> no, but oh, okay. seriously, be careful. But if you are traveling with a priestess, they are very pleasant people, if you know what I mean. They are very... If they follow of the Eternal Guide and a true one, there are lots of hacks in Bastillion. Then she will be a lovely individual, I'm sure. Good to know. Anything else you want to know before you head off on a uh, suicide mission in the ice? <laughs> well, <laughs> I was thinking of getting horses, but if you suggest being silent over the ice sheets, maybe that's not such a good idea. This is not the wisest idea. 
You could take horses to Lendir if you wanted to save some time. That is mostly snow and stone. That's not think we're in much hurry, are we? Not really, I don't think. Uh, is there a time limit on the contract? No. No. It's usually with this kind of thing, similar to the last one, they'll probably send a message out mm. with a messenger yeah. to sort of say, go ahead of you and... and you know, sometimes yeah. they can get the high elves to send magical messages and things instead, so. They'll just tell Should all buy, like, warm clothes. Oh, absolutely. Warmer oh, clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If, if you don't have winter gear, you totally mm -hmm. should buy your winter gear. If I remember correctly, they're 10 gold each. I'll do that. Is what I usually <laughs> do. I guess my only other question for Corpse Flower is, um, and while we're there, since we do plan on returning at some point, is there anything you'd like us to bring back? Perhaps something from your homeland that you miss? I can't say that I very much miss anything. It, this is... Slate Cove is much more my speed now. I, I think I'm plenty fine. I don't need... Uh, religious trinkets or weapons or magic or anything. I know the people around here seem to be happy to have you as part of their community. They should be. You seem to be fitting right in. So we'll be in and out as quickly as possible because it sounds like this might be a place that we would not fare well if we were to it overstay our welcome. It, it depends. It depends on how streetwise you are. It is a place quite unlike your home here. You will... You will find it very different. Sounds like I'm gonna have fun. He, he, <laughs> he then turns to Varric and says, If you intend on stealing from Bastillion, keep your eyes to the skies. Skies? The rooks will not appreciate any sort of crime, especially if you continue doing the mumbo-jumbo that you do. They will Ooh. probably see you as some sort of beastie. Especially Ooh. if they take off your mask. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm sorry, did you say rooks or rocks? Rooks, rooks. There's ro moving rocks. That, that would be an incredibly inefficient way to defend someplace. I know some people, uh, they make golems, <laughs> but... It's, no, no, no like R-O-C. Like bird rocks. Oh, the Big bird? No, 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 no. Well, there should be at least one. But no, rooks. They defend the city of Bastillion. They uh, they have grapple lines. They fly across the streets. They capture anyone that is causing crime. And they need that sort of mobility because it is a city of magic. And you will definitely learn some things about magic that you had never learned before. So if you're going to do crime, prepare yourself. I'll leave because such things to... Beruit, and I'll try my best to stay off the streets with my companion here, and I'll motion to the dog to Bjork. <laughs> Who's just like just digging a hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, do they teach? Uh, uh, like, is there any way I can pay them to teach me how to do that? With the, the, you said with the lines and the grappling. No. 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 <laughs> okay. Unless you were to become one of them, which would be a good career change if you wanted to do so. I know that your uh, people with your skin condition uh, are <laughs> somewhat welcome, depending. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. Depending. Oh yeah, I, I, it, it's always a depending. <laughs> It's better odds than here. Oh, very much. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you. Or can I go back to chopping my firewood? And like, Aelnor's pile is, is like so much bigger than his <laughs> pile of firewood. <laughs> Just one of these few He's minutes. been rage chopping. <laughs> yeah. well, I think we're planning on heading out, but fancy a drink before we hit the road. He's like, takes the axe back from Aelnor and then puts it back down. Like, I am always happy for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to have a nice little drink before you prepare to head off. And that's the perfect place 
to end today's stream. It's almost like I planned it or something. Yeah. Um, so we can have some talks with Baruch tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, next week, before you leave. And we don't have Eleanor, um, so don't need, plan not to smash anything, uh, or smite mm. anything. Um, we, yep. <laughs> There's that, that'll be the plan, then. Yeah. So, uh, why don't we start our Circle of Shame with... Dungeon Dad. Dungeon Papa. This is me. Yeah. That is I. What up? I am Dungeon Dad, also known as my real name, Josiah. Um, I make videos on the internet and put them on YouTube about D&D, specifically about weird old monsters and stuff. And other things, like how to deal with killing characters in your D&D campaign and all kinds of DM <laughs> tips. What? That was a fun episode to do. Um, <laughs> Killing there was characters a big never. conversation about that one because it was originally when I uploaded it was like player death and then people were like you mean character death? I was <laughs> like, yeah, that's I, funny. I don't mean yeah. It was this? I think the original title was killing your players and it was like no. no, no. Oh no! Who <laughs> wouldn't have liked that? <laughs> that's the opposite of what I meant. Anyways, <laughs> yes, that is what I do. You can find me on YouTube as dungeon dad or you can follow me on twitter at dungeon papa because update on the guy who has the actual at dungeon dad account now it's banned so um that's cool. maybe he was you know it's a different kind of dungeon maybe who knows <laughs> but in any case speaking so of maybe, you could, maybe you could talk to sorry Aaron, how are you how are you hi What's i'm up? good uh, I'm Aaron. I play here uh, on Sundays, and I play on Delbrick's channel on Fridays. You can tell we haven't played for a couple weeks because my characters will slowly get more chaotic without that outlet. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. Alrighty. Have a good couple weeks, guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you're about to go on holiday well, or yeah, vacation. Nice. Um. So, it's just a weird. It's just a weird like American versus English because they're they're the same word. Vacation, holiday. Why are they? Yeah. Why are they two different well, words? It always confuses me. Because holiday means something different. Like, well, it means the same thing. What? It means for you. Like we have holidays, which are yeah. like Christmas. I, and, like, I guess you. I guess Americans just couldn't work out the context of what they were saying, so had to make <laughs> oh. a separate word. No, we like. We, we just say public holiday or holiday, like. It's a whole other word. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm 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 anti both of you. <laughs> Speaking of, it's Tesh. Hey Tesh, who are you? How are you? Hi. Do, just okay. so you know, I'm you're good. Delric's favorite. Am I? He constantly talks about you. <laughs> Yay! Uh, okay, I'm Tesh of the Tesh Tube. Uh, you can find me on the Tesh Tube on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Uh, Twitter's where you want to follow me, uh, if you follow me on only one of those, because that's where I post everything and anything that I'm doing. Uh, you can find me here on Sundays, you can find me on, uh, the Dracovan Empire, uh, Tantus's channel, uh, on, uh, Thursdays, and, uh, soon to be another one that will be happening on Tuesdays. So, yeah, the, follow the Twitter for updates. Cool, and that's that, because there is no will, of course. Um, no, he eats <laughs> He's, he's, he's out, he'll be back next week. So, uh, me, you can find me at Twitter, at Oyerant. Um, we're doing this next week. We've also got Wednesdays at uh, Arden, which is start number, which is nearly gonna end. Uh, sorry for the internet issues. I will try and fix them, but I probably won't be able to, so, you know, just gotta live with it. Um, and this show is supported by Patreon. You can support on the link down there. All the good stuff. Uh, I will uh, see you next time. Say goodbye, kids at home. Bye.